Back in 1976, Bob Lutz, the Swiss-American businessman who was head of Ford of Europe at the time, was a busy man. Project Erica was already underway. That was the replacement for the old rear-drive Ford Escort with the front-wheel-drive Ford Escort. We've already covered that story. He had Project Teresa underway as well, <clears throat> which was the final facelift of the Ford Cortina due in 1980. And he was looking at setting his sights for the replacement for that car, which was due to debut sometime in 1982 or 83. So Project Linda was launched, and that was heavily inspired by Project Erica. In fact, uh, the, uh, the initial models that they produced just looked like a large version of the upcoming Mark III European Ford Escort. He wasn't really pleased with that, so he set his sights on something that was much more radical. He knew that the industry was changing in a big way and that the 1980s was going to see a dramatic change in car design. Bustle back high boot lids, for instance, were one thing. Aerodynamic glass was another. Low drag coefficients in the wake of the oil crisis of the 1970s were going to be big business. After literally less than a year in development, Project Linda was cancelled. And in its place was Project Tony. Project Tony was going to be a major advancement for Ford of Europe. It was still going to retain rear drive and a good deal of the mechanicals actually were going to be carried over from the Ford Cortina. But in terms of the way it looked, um, it was going to be really radical indeed. And in fact, the early design sketches that were done in 1977 Lutz decided to uh, send some to uh, Don E. Peterson, who was head of international operations at Ford back in the States. He basically told him to sit down and have a cup of tea, or words to that effect, and keep looking at these images until you are fully familiarized with them. That's how confident he was in how different and progressive this new car was going to be. Project Tony advanced at quite a rapid rate to the point that the clay models were approved, the final models were approved by the end of uh, 1978, and the overall car was signed off on in November 1979. The car was going to have a variety of body shells. There was going to be a three-door hatchback, a five-door hatchback, and a four-door estate, five-door estate initially. The initial prototypes that were running around were Badge Taunus, which was the German version of the Ford Cortina. But no final name had been decided upon until Ford decided to launch its Probe 3 concept, which it had been working on for several years as well at the Frankfurt Auto Show in 1981, it then announced that the new car was going to be called Sierra. The Sierra itself debuted in 1982 to a considerable amount of fanfare and uh, media speculation and criticism. The jelly mold, as it was called, was a massive culture shock to conservative Brits in particular. On the American side of things, it was a very different story. The three-door model, uh, Ford chose to have the bi-wing spoiler added onto it that was pretty much from the Pro 3 concept car. Now, the three-door was very late to the uh, Sierra development game, and so it didn't really go under, undergo much testing until late 1981, early 1982 and uh, it became the XR4, and that debuted in 1983, about nine months after the Commodore Garden versions of the Sierra did. It had always been Lutz's plan 
to sell a version of the Sierra in the United States. It hadn't been finalized what form it was going to take. One form, for instance, was a strange combination uh, that was looked at of a Targa and convertible with a regular trunk. Um, it had also drawn up plans to have the three-door sold in the States as early as 1982. And back then, composite headlights weren't legal. They didn't become legal until 1983. Then there was the issue of what the American version was going to be called because Ford wanted to have a delineation uh, away from the Ford brand itself for its North American market cars and eventually settled on Mercor, only in America. Mercor is German for Mercury. And this name caused problems for this brand right from the get-go, mainly because nobody knew how to pronounce it. So they couldn't use the Sierra nameplate because the trademark was held by General Motors. So it was simply called XR4TI. And it debuted in late 1984 as a 1985 model. The 2.8 litre cologne injected engine, which the XR4I used, was not certified by the EPA. So Ford decided that it was going to just put in another engine instead. And it chose the 2.3 litre turbocharged Lima unit from the Ford SVO. Mercor, it has to be said, was not a big success. I'm going to go into the actual story of Mercor when I get my Scorpio here out. A couple of years ago, um, I found an XR40i, a 1987 example, which was the uh, penultimate model year for them, in Facebook Marketplace, and it was in pristine order. I was intent on getting it to add it to this. At the time, I had some uh, major uh, repairs coming up, namely on my uh, XJ Sovereign, and I just felt that I couldn't justify dropping a grand on another car. Although I am denard and um denard, but I did decide I was going to pull the trigger. After I decided I was going to pull the trigger, the guy had sold it. So I asked him before it went away to its new home in Tennessee, if I could spend some time with the car and t take some photos and uh, interview the then owner, Michael Hall, who lives about an hour and a half from here, about his ownership of the car. He bought it from new. It was great to see the car up, up close and personal, and I did put a feature in Classic Retro Modern magazine about it, along with story of Mayor Cor itself. So I made a video interview which helped me write the article. It's not a professionally done piece of video at all, uh, but I thought I would share it with you because it was just such a fantastic example of this rare and very exciting car. I'm Darren Walker and this is Auto Atlantica. Right, so what we have here is a 1987 Mercor XR40i. Just very briefly again, uh, this was the brainchild of a certain Bob Lutz while he was uh, vice president of Ford of Europe, and then he came back to Ford of America. And what he wanted to do was to sell uh, real-wheel drive Fords uh, from Germany to compete with the German big three and uh, in particular he was gunning for Mercedes and um, and so they brought over two cars a version of the uh, Ford Sierra XR4 which is this Mercor XR40i and as you know the Ford Scorpio or Ford Granada which came over as the Mercor Scorpio now that was that car was much closer to its European origins what makes this one really special is the fact that it actually wasn't built at Ford. It was built by Carmen. And it was hand-built by Carmen in Reiner. And the reason for that is that the car has a 2.3-litre Lima 
turbo engine. It was the same engine that they put into the Ford Mustang SVO at the time, but this did not have an intercooler. And the reason that they did that was because the 2.8 litre Cologne injected unit, at least, was not certified by the EPA for US sale. So there's a lot of similarities, especially inside. Leather was an option. This one has leather. Uh, the five-speed manual, that T9 gearbox, uh, was standard. Auto was an option, but the, you wanted the manual because in manual, guys, this car produces 175 horsepower. It drops 30 horsepower in uh, automatic guys, which is closer to what the XR4i in Europe had. Now, uh, other than that, this looks identical to the European car. Biggest differences are the Mercor badge. There's a turbo boost gauge back there, if you can see that. And then up to 1987, see that speedo? They kept the, the old 85 mile an hour speedos in them. And they just took their standard European speedo and just only made it go halfway, which is interesting. But for the 88 car, which was the final year of Mercor XR40i production, uh, they actually gave it the 450 mile an hour speedo. Let's just uh, raise that bonnet real quick. Uh, hey Mike, would you mind holding the hood up for me? Just want to get a shot of the engine. So here's the, uh, this is the engine. That's a 2.3 litre uh, Lima. Uh, unit. It's a four-cylinder straight, uh, obviously inline four engine, but this was a cracking engine because they actually used it uh, in uh, European Touring Car Championships. They actually brought over XR40Is, converted them to right-hand drive, and uh, raced them. Uh, for a short while, Andy Rouse, I'll flag a picture of uh, him and uh, his XR40i up on the screen, where well, it was a Ford XR40i over there uh, in race guys. And that was before the Cosworth came in, which, uh, of course, had a bit more power, about 200. But uh, as you can see, it looks very, very similar to the European car. Uh, the headlights, even though they look the same, were different. Uh, they were uh, federally mandated. These are actually not glass. They're uh, plastic. And this particular one is in amazing condition because these normally fade in, in, they get a lot of sun damage, but uh, same with the indicators and the fog lights. The, well, they're in amazing condition, slightly slimmer than the European cars at night because the bumper was stretched to mandate because the five mile an hour mandate, but I think more handsome. These wheels for 85 and 86, they had the same pepper pots as the European XR4, but for 87 and 88, these were the standard wheels and then you could get like a BBS style uh, wheel as well. But other than that, it's pretty much identical. The red stripe on the American versions was slightly darker than the Sierra XR4i. In 88, they went to uh, a black stripe. In addition, the rear spoiler, you can see here, which had long gone by 87 in Europe, this biplane spoiler, stayed on the US car until 87. This was the final year. And then the 88 cars had the smaller one-piece uh, spoiler from the um, XR 4x4. The Mercor script at the back, which is the same as on my Scorpio, that came on the 87 cars. Um, it was only on there for 87 and 88 as well. But even though this looks like the first-generation Sierra uh, outwardly, this did have, from 87 onwards, it did have the same improvements as the facelifted European car from the same time period, uh, namely the that see that the dash the that uh, central speaker they used to have that made the dashboards crack because they reverberated that's gone. Had the wider transmission tunnel that's on there too, and a host of other small improvements. But uh, the rear uh, window strakes didn't feature until the last year of production. Uh, on here which is which was curious so very very interesting um backstory behind it but uh, i have here this very kind gentleman uh by the name of uh, michael hall and this is his car well it will be until monday all right uh, mike right. <laughs> then it's heading for tennessee. tennessee so it's heading for 
uh, warmer climes for the winter. So, uh, Mike, uh, tell me about your own ship experience. That you bought the car new, right? Yeah, I bought the car in Akron mm -hmm. uh, in 1987, actually in November of '87, and uh, I had a young family, so I wanted a sports car, but I needed a sports car with a back seat. Um, obviously, this met all the requirements. It was a lot of fun to drive. It was an attention grabber. Uh, in fact, most people that saw it didn't know what it was. The mm -hmm. question was always, what is this? Mm -hmm. A lot of times I was asked, is this a Porsche? Um, but it was a fun car. Uh, a lot of good family memories with it. Did you use it as a, as a daily at the time, or was it more of a summer car, Mike? It was more of a summer car. Uh, I would drive it back and forth to work in the summer. Yep. Um, windows down, sunroof open. Um, it was just a great touring car, um, but it went away. It got put away in the winter. Yep. Um, it, it, it was always in the garage. And that's why it's in this condition. In this part of the in this part of the world, just look at the, that boot. I mean, <laughs> I mean, people would actually commit murder to get a parcel shelf for their Sierras that hasn't been cut out for speakers. It's amazing. Just amazing. Just look at this, like brand new. Um, truly incredible. And that's why this car is in the shape that it's in. It's just been fastidiously looked after and maintained. What are some of your favorite memories of uh, this car, Mike? Summer driving. Yeah. Um, you know, out in the country. Well, mm -hmm. We live in the country, but yep. south of us, um, there's a lot of uh, farmland, a lot of Amish. Um, taking it down through there and just again. Amish country is nice. On a beautiful day, uh, windows down and sunroof open, just yep. going for a ride with the two boys in the back seat and, yep. and my wife beside me. Yeah, because they're. Um... That they are, they do have a very sporty drive. I mean, with it being rear drive, it always drove well. It was uh, with the turbo, and then that spoil and that spools into it was. It made for a very, very dr different driving experience to the XR4i, which was a much lazier GT kind of feel with that V6. But uh, but these were uh, much sportier. And have you taken it on any local, on any long road trips at all, or has it just been basically uh, local no, jaunts? it's just stayed around yeah. home most of the time. We might have taken it to Tennessee. Yep. My wife is from Tennessee. Yep. Um, but actually, I don't remember doing that. <laughs> so it's probably just stayed around here all its life. And uh, the engine is completely stock, right? There's been no, uh, no upgrades uh, or uh, any kind of... Uh, modifications done to it or anything like that it's completely standard wow wow and that ladies and gentlemen is what people lust after these days i have not seen one that is this original it is absolutely remarkable i mean sure it's got some signs that it's 30 years old there's a bit of a scratch and ding here and there and there's some a little bit of paint fade there which you'd expect um same uh, on the mirrors but for a red car that the fact that it's not completely oxidized uh, is real testament to how Mike's looked after it. Uh, what's the mileage on it? Um, just a little over 67,000. You can see here, our voice always makes me smile. It says Ford Werk AG, which was the actual name of Ford of Deutschland. Uh, Köln, which is the German for Cologne, Germany which is the English word for Germany. So you've got the German word for the city and the English word for the country. Brilliant. I mean, uh, but these are the details that we love because it's part of the history of the car and it's part of the history of the success or fa failure of a car. And we know that Merkel was a failed brand. It lasted for four years and Ford quietly dropped Merkel at the end of 1989, the XR40i went early in 89. That was a very, very quiet exit. And then uh, the Scorpio ended because 1990 saw new federal regulations, which uh, 
uh, actually demanded either an air brag or electric um, passive restraint seat belts and uh, Ford had very low sales on both of these towards the end, both of these models, and it wasn't, they felt it just wasn't worth the investment. Now, of course, both, as you know, both the Scorpio and the Sierra after 1989 went on to further facelifts, uh, particularly the Scorpio and uh, the Sierra did all the way up to 1993 when it was replaced by the Mondeo, which came over here as the Contour and as a Mercury Mystique. He has sold it with a heavy heart. It's gone to uh, a very good cause, a, a family member who is uh, sick. The proceeds are going to help pay for her medical treatment, which is which is brilliant. And you know, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. I hope, uh, Mike, that with your daughter-in-law, I hope that uh, she gets well very soon. And I'm sure that uh, you know that. Uh, will certainly help you know yeah, uh, her on the way and uh, you know this is not an inexpensive country for healthcare and uh, and these are things that uh, many people have to do and uh, and, and I applaud Mike uh, for that but uh, well, it's a fascinating story from beginning to end and uh, I really want to thank you Mike for your time um, you by. yeah thanks for your time me <laughs> keeping you away from your family. And this walk around is absolutely superb bonnet up 1987 Mercor XR4 Ti.